in the schools and with the mentors and those sorts of things. Sure. Um, can we, I lost my voice um, speaking to kids yesterday. Um, can we just take just a quick moment of silence just for victims, please? I appreciate that. I just don't don't want us forgetting about those that have lost their life and then the survivors that are continuing to deal with this. And so, um, Mount Lexington does have a lot of things going on, but most of it is through our community partners. Um, like the mayor says, so much of what we do is kind of behind the scenes that we can't talk about in detail, but one of those things is our relationship with UK Trauma Center. Um, and now Lexington Rescue Mission through the Safety Net Program. Um, a matter of fact, just this morning, I got a call to help a family get relocated. And so um, we are not law enforcement, and so the enforcement part is something obviously we can't do, but everything else we try to dig our feet into. What are the root causes? When we notice conflicts that are going on in the street, in the neighborhood, in the school, how can we and our street outreach workers get it early um, to possibly mediate that conflict? How are we keeping families safe, families who are completely innocent? Um, maybe their nephew is involved in something. Um, maybe somebody thinks they know something. Maybe they feel that they have talked to law enforcement, and so now they're being targeted. So what can we do to keep families on both sides safe? Um, so a lot of that stuff we can't really talk about in detail because we want to keep the street outreach workers that we work with safe. Um, but how do you quantify the homicides and the shootings that don't happen? Because each and every day um, we are seeing conflicts that could easily go one way, but through the work of our community partners, um, thank God um, we're able to see them go another way. And so when we talk about quick fixes or stuff that we can just implement, from our perspective, nothing is really quick. I mean, we've seen an impact a little bit this year with our age group, but we're talking root causes. Um, just like the pandemic exposed things that have been going on for decades, same thing with gun violence. So these aren't things that's just gonna be fixed overnight. That's just the truth. Um, and two, Lexington has never really seen this level of it. So we're still building our infrastructure. A lot of things other cities are doing, when they hear about what we're doing, they said, okay, you all are on the right track, but they've had years of this level of violence to build that infrastructure. We've never had that, so we're, we're just building it. But I do feel like we're making gains, but um, you know, we're just gonna keep working hard. Our police force is doing a great job. Everybody up here is doing great. And so I don't know if there's just one quick thing. I know people would make you feel that that's possible, but it don't really work like that, so. Yes, so, but to answer your first question, there's a huge shift. It's a huge shift and it breaks my heart because I've been working with young people for 10 years. It's a huge shift and people gotta understand that. From the music to the social media, coming out of this pandemic, the amount of guns that are on the street, we're seeing things in 10 and 11 year olds that we weren't seeing until they were in high school when I was coming up. So yes, there is a shift and we can't be afraid to say that. But that is why street outreach, mediation, mentoring, people from the community continuing to step up matters. Because we are trying to evolve with this shift and they need people that they can relate to and talk to. So it's definitely a shift and it's not just frustrating, it, it breaks my heart. Um, but we are trying to keep up with that shift. And so it's definitely a shift in the culture. And it's everywhere. I was in Charlotte yesterday. They're dealing with the same thing. It's everywhere. It's not just Lexington. I know it doesn't make anybody feel any better, but it's a national, cultural, societal shift that we are experiencing that we're trying to combat. Sure. And, and we probably have now um, about 40 to 50 mentors that we work with. We got 14 in-school mentoring programs, including all the alternative schools that'll be starting next week. 
And a lot of those alternative schools, unfortunately, are the schools that have a lot of these young people that are in the cycle of violence. So that's the Learning Center, Success Academy, and other schools, as well as our middle schools and high schools and high crime areas. And so our mentors come in every week um, at the minimum. Um, and they talk about conflict resolution. They talk about money management, ways they can make money, generational curses. And so um, just the other night, um, Council Member Chuck, where you at? You know, I give him a shout out because he showed up. We put a call out to the community for people to come out and help monitor um, the late night at Roots. You know, this work isn't just when it's sunny outside and it's pretty. Um, it's not just coming into the school building where it's cameras. Are you willing to come out into the neighborhood, to the street, and, and engage these youth? For the last several years that have been issues at, with youth at Roots and Heritage Festival, we put a call out to the community. Chuck and many others came out in our orange shirts, and we didn't have any major issues at Roots. Now, by the time I got to my phone at 12.30, there were a lot of issues going on around the city, um, but that's just the nature of the work. Um, it's not that people aren't out here doing their best. Law enforcement did a great job. It's just so much going on, and we're all doing the best that we can do. Other questions? Yes.